and they were disappointed to see it was just sick people. Okay. Um, they were very disturbed by a, a certain relationship that was going on in the movie between a couple of people. Mm-hmm. So I think um, this movie, if it's a miss for anybody, I think that's maybe what's going to do it. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. So, so see. yeah, that's it. It's too bad. I, I saw the, you know, it, it it got three solid stars and a little bit of a four, fourth star, but... I would have thought it would have been closer to a four star movie just in a general. A good solid four star. Yeah, I could see but that too. But some people I understand just, the yeah. the criticisms of it, I think. Yeah. And of course there aren't a ton of reviews on here yet. The movie hasn't been out very long. Right. We'll see what happens. Gotcha. For garbage in, garbage out. Um, where do we begin? We've got a lot to talk about. So. I don't know. We Let, better. Let's we start just in re- a- reverse order. We'll we'll start with a good marriage. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah, we just watched that last night. What did you think about that? Wait, is that? Oh yeah, I guess that is what it was called. Stephen King's A Good Marriage. Um, it was pretty good. It was surprisingly good for for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's Stephen King, so that's for me usually scores points. But I tend to be harder on his uh, well, non supernatural. Right. I was gonna say just for a lot of people, it always it surprises me that it still surprises a lot of people that he isn't just a horror writer. <laughs> True. Um, this was not. I mean, this had a little bit of a oh man, but, you know, a little bit of there's, real life horror going on in it. Yeah. But, um. Yeah, it wasn't supernatural or monsters or, you know. Right. Supernatural monsters. Um, So it may initially come, come across as a bit of a Hallmark movie. Maybe Hallmark isn't the right word, but uh, <laughs> Oxygen Network, I'm thinking of the, <laughs> Well, I'm thinking about it, it being okay. a, because it's more of a... a lifetime. It's a lifetime. Life, there you go. Lifetime movie. That's Television. what I was thinking. A yes. life. Television for women. But uh, it, it was enjoyable all the way through, I think, it held my attention and was... Uh... Okay, well, it's. I'm going to say it's, it is not for everyone. Super slow, um, like, character study, mm-hmm. character piece. Mm-hmm. Um, woman, this, I found out this at first. I was like, oh, thanks for the spoiler, but you find out right away and I'm just going to say it. Okay. This this woman finds out. I mean, there's a, there's a serial killer out there who's killed a dozen young girls. Mm-hmm. And this poor woman finds out it's her husband so basically it's what do you do with that um so it was a lot of just following her around and um um you know there was long quiet moments um a lot of her on the screen alone thinking about stuff or you know she's kind of having these flashes of picturing what would happen yeah so it was kind of like is he really there is he not there what's her uh it was kind of interesting but yeah not for everybody um, it actually, I'm kind of tempted to check the reviews really quick on here because uh-huh. this is one of those where I think people without patience would just be like, oh man, this was just slow and boring and complete waste of, yeah, you have to kind of like that slow, um, slow burn type. Yeah. Yeah. Tension. It, was re- it was real slow, but I'm not saying that as a negative. Gotcha. Yeah. I'm just going to look it up really quick. Bear with me. Here okay. it is right here. And look at that. It has a little bit of a higher rating than the one I was just looking at for Crimson Peak. So that's interesting. That's very interesting. It's got, uh, yeah, it's got almost four stars. It's interesting. But and I'm also thinking the, the, the right audience would, would seek this out. Right. You know what I mean? So that's maybe an unfair, whereas everybody ran out to see Crimson Peak, um, 
I think just uh, Stephen King fans and people that understand Stephen King would be more inclined to watch this. Gotcha. Um, oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Want to hear a one star review? Sure. On uh, a good marriage. This person said, okay, within 15 minutes, my girlfriend and I figured it out. We spent the entire movie waiting for a twist that never came. It was such a huge letdown. Okay. They figured it out within 15 minutes. Well, because that's not the secret. (laughs) The guy's a serial killer and his wife finds out. Because the wife figures it out in 15 minutes. Was there a clue? You're you're supposed to be waiting to see what, how she's going to handle this. Right. Like, okay, yeah, within 15 minutes, sure. Yeah, oh, well, congratulations, you and your girlfriend figured it out in 15 minutes because the movie tells you. Because <laughs> somebody opened a book and pointed to the word on the page. That's right. right. So, yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, the whole time I'm sitting there thinking, okay, she's just going to go on and live with him? Like, what? I kept thinking, what would I do? So, so I find out that you're a serial killer. <laughs> do I call the police? Do I pretend like I didn't find out? Do I, you know? I, I, I'm going to tell you I, right now, you don't have to worry about that because that's not, uh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's good. Okay. But yeah, so I mean, therein lies the story on the movie. You're supposed to just be, be with this woman and just going along on her journey to see what she's going to do. Yeah. It's not any big twist. It's not any big, you know. Okay. So... Let's move on to uh, Star Trek Into the Darkness. Okay. What do you think about that? Um, I liked it. I really liked it. It was it was pretty pretty good, pretty awesome. It was. It was. Very well done. Um, I understand other people's complaints about it. The the hardcore Star Trek fans. It was. I'm not saying it didn't have its issues and stuff, mm-hmm. but I thought it was really entertaining, and so on. Um. It did get a little over the top and a bit Hollywood and a bit sure complete, but it was uh, it was an adrenaline filled well, fun ride. I mean, we kept what we watched it, of course, at home on our couch. Mm-hmm. We luckily we have a, a, a pretty big TV, but I mean, you could tell it was meant to be enjoyed on the big screen with your 3D glasses on. Right. I mean, because yeah, that action and that zooming through, you know. Zooming through space, space or and... debris or, I mean, there was a lot of moments where it's like, oh, yeah, this is so a 3D movie. Yeah. So maybe is that what the gripe was? I well, was... I think there was other things, too, as far as the characters. Simon Pegg's character, Scotty, yeah. just seemed comic relief. There was a little bit of right. deus ex machina there where uh, the chair of the gods came down to save people. Right. You know, there were there were a few moments, like a little sex in there. Not really, but, you know, for Star Trek, it was... Kind of, um, yes. But you know, but well, just, those are just that, little critiques and stuff. You know what I mean? Like a super yeah. fan's not going to be like, "That's not Star Trek. That's not right." That's well, not you know Kirk. what? It's... Everything dies with time. Yeah. Your old favorites and your old. I mean, I've and I think it happen with my favorite things. So you just have to go with it. And it's hard. There were nods to to the past in there that were enjoyable and. Easter eggs to watch for and find yeah. it and so on. Um, well, I liked it. I'm a, I'm a next generation weenie, so that's my thing. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to the original characters and Captain Kirk and all of that, I'm a Picard girl, so <laughs> things they can get things over on me a little easier. That I'm not going to be as nuts about it. You're, you're wrong there, but that's okay. I shut up. Uh, so... There was no better captain. Moving on to the Muppets, the new Muppet TV show. We can are, just move past. Are them. we letting that one go? Um, you know what's a miss about that? Once you get past the idea that the Muppets are real and in the real world, like, like so what? Like, I mean, I was expecting more clever writing. I was expecting yeah. it to be, you know, not just cashing in on the fact that, oh, right. well, here's... Right. Puppets dating real yeah. people and well, that's what I, I yeah. Fuzzy and that girl. I'm sorry, that's just too weird. Um, Fuzzy needs to find a nice bear girl to <laughs> to be with. <laughs> a nice bear girl. A bear girl. Yeah. <laughs> you know um, I mean. Oh, not that kind of bear. Not a bear girl. Gotcha. She is bear. She doesn't have any fur or anything. I'm thinking that a uh, that Hellboy uh, 
issue <laughs> with the bear and the girl. Anyway, it's um, yeah. The last time we watched it, I think we're about. Well, I think we're all caught up. We are caught up, yeah. So we were watching maybe the fourth episode or something. Yeah. And we're sitting there and we're watching it. And, I mean, I guess I could take it or leave it. I would watch it if it was on. But I sat there. If you think about it too much, see, it makes me not want to watch it. Mm -hmm. Because that was when I realized, you know what, if this was anybody but the Muppets, I wouldn't be watching this. Yeah. Because the the stories like there's no story. It's just like really not good writing. What I thought, yeah, it's lazy writing. Like I said, I think they're cashing in on it. I think a better show was back in two thousand two thousand two with Seth Green was Greg the Bunny. That was a, a TV show that made it from uh, like cable access to actual television for I don't know maybe a season or half a season or something, um, and where. Um, it introduced puppets as ordinary citizens okay. and stuff. And that was more edgy and fun. You know, Muppets was, was something else, you yeah. know, in, in the past or whatever. I mean, the, and, the original. Yeah, the original. And so like they, Back in our day. Now I think the, to me, the, the writing on the current show just kind of seems kind of lazy and, well, yeah, because some of the plot lines, I mean, this last one was all about Kermit needed to get a gift for his new girlfriend, and he tried to get help from his friends, and nothing really worked out, and he ended up asking his ex-girlfriend, Miss Piggy, for help. She picks out a gift, and it seems great and everything, um, but, you know, Miss Piggy's pissed in the end, and you find out she did one little thing in there to... You know, she picked out a music box, but it had the song that belonged to her and Kermit in it. That was a story. <laughs> and that's if those so were corny. People, that's... If we were, yeah, if we were watching people act that out, I don't care who they act. They could be my favorite actors, and it would be like, what is this crap? <laughs> it's just not. It's just not good. Yeah. And I'm not. I'm. I'm trying. I'm trying really hard. Um, you know, it seems like you either love it or you hate it. You're either the old school. I mean, I'm totally old school. We grew up watching that. Yeah. Um, you know, we were in grade school and junior high or whatever, whatever years it came out. Um, you know, and it was the days of the variety show. Right. So like this and the, the, the way they're doing it now, the way it's filmed and stuff, I don't like that, uh, where the, all of a sudden one of them's just talking to the camera, talking to you. Right. That's really my favorite format for sitcom. Something like the Modern Family type show. That, yeah, uh, stuff that like Modern that. Family, I gotta say. That's much better, yeah. Oh yeah, if you sit, if you catch part of that, I, like, in spite of myself, I, I watched a couple episodes because it was so gosh darn funny. <laughs> um, Muppets is not funny. It's not funny. It's not clever. It's about the characters. That's what keeps me still watching it. Yeah. Because I love Pepe, the prawn. I love Pepe. Um, if he could have his own show or something. <laughs> but come on, the writers have to step up. They got to do something different. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're going to modernize it, because of course everyone online is like, oh, get over it. All you old school people, you know, that was the seventies or the eighties, whatever. Those days are gone. It's a new modern, more fun, you know, hip version of it. But no, it's not to me. So I was like, okay, I can do that. That's yeah. fine. But They're it's just using it's, recycled jokes and recycled storylines. It's just that not just, clever. Yeah. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get what they're doing. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry. And if you didn't grow up with it, and this is the first time you're seeing it, I like. I'm curious what. What people think of that? Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't have the you don't have the attachment to the characters like you do. Yeah. You know, to see all of our old favorites we grew up with. Right. Uh, they're in stupid situations delivering bland lines, but we at least have that. Yeah. Um, if I was just seeing it for the first time ever, I, I, what would I think of it? I don't know. It's a good question. Let us know I what you think. Know. Yeah. Um, so let's talk then about, have we covered everything that we were supposed to? I think, except I want to know about Horror Store. And is that why we're going to Ikea today? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I need a lamp. Oh, okay. I need a new lamp for my workspace. Well, tell me about Horror Store. What is that? Oh, something else I have to talk about. Yeah. I already went on and on too much about the Muppets. Okay. You tell me about Horror Store. I know nothing about it. It looked like a, it looked like a silly teen <laughs> romance novel or something. What do you look? No. Teen romance. What? It's, is that's not what it is? I don't think so. 
No. But it is a teen horror novel. 